So we have another very interesting customer session uh, with Sahih Bindan next up. And Sahih Bindan is Turkey's biggest online marketplace. They have a very unique use case and they're deploying several workloads, including databases such as MySQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, ClickHouse, and Apache Kafka on Red Hat OpenShift. And this supports their whole website and handles all the traffic um, that they have received on the website. We have Jim Omertak, uh, who is a software and data architecture manager at Zahi Bindan, and Erkin, who is a senior solutions architect at Red Hat, and he helps our customers in their app development journeys. Uh, and they're here to shed more light on the Sahi Bindan story. So hi, Jam, and hi, Arjun. Welcome to the comments session. And thank you so much for being here. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And so I'm going to, so I'm, yes. So you can see their profiles up here. And we can just dive right in. I won't waste any more time. Um, so can you can you tell me a bit about Sahib and then what does Sahib and then actually do? Sahib is a classified platform, classified platform from Turkey, a diverse spectrum of new and second hand goods is sold on the truck uh, platform like real estate, cars, cranes, clothing, food. Uh, with close to 60 million active users, 30 million pages per month. Sayuna is the fourth largest online online classifies platform in, in the world, trailing oil on the Craigslist in USA, Avito in Russia, and Le Bon Coin in France. Uh, it's also one of the top business sites in Turkey, according to Alexa. Currently, Sayuna has close to 1,000 employees, 250 of which are working in uh, R&D department. Sayuna is currently running on more than 4,000 4, PMs in more, in more than uh, 150 distinct roles distributed between two on-prem sites and a public cloud site on GCP. Uh, that's about Sahib Bindan. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Okay. So as I understand, you decided to undergo a massive cloud transformation project. What were the challenges that Sahib Bindan was facing and why did you decide to go for such a transformation project? In Sahib Bindan, we firstly wanted to modernize our underlying technology stack of the services we provide, enabling product with scalability and reusability improvements. As well as we want to reduce time to market, optimize return of investment and establish a more secure and well-governed technology infrastructure. To our understanding, every company needs to be a technology company and should provide its, its business good means to deliver new services to the customers in a reliable, secure, scalable, and a fast way. Uh, we also want to employ top talent, which thrive in companies with up-to-date data tech, up-to-date technology stack. Although public providers uh, check all these boxes, we are subject to strict governance regulations in the form of a local version of GDPR. Uh, that means in some point in the future, we may have to suddenly abandon uh, abandon our public cloud as extensions. So we are kind of stuck with on-prem uh, data centers. Uh, before, before 2020, we have built up upon our, our virtualization auto and automation platform around Debian, Linux, and Zen with, hum, with some homegrown Python-based infrastructures code tooling. We named Simon and Cloud Systems. Uh, when we need that that kind of infrastructure, uh, the tools, the modern tools are not very mature actually, and uh, this uh, this tooling is although very customizable because it's written by us, uh, has a very steep learning curve and uh, do not really attract people who already learned and used open source tools for that purpose. So. Uh, in fact, we wish to minimize the footprint of self-provisioned, operated, secured, and governed technology stack components and uh, focus our efforts, engineering effort, effort to our application layer and data layer. But uh, we, we also envision that the actual containerization of 
of all our applications is will be a multi-year project and we decided to uh, instead uh, approach in a we decided not to make a big bank actually so we decided to go with the lift and shift approach where we keep running our workload on virtual machines and focus on replacing the underlying platform first uh, with these ideas and restrictions uh, in 2020 we started a two-phase project in the first phase we moved a part of our workload to google public plus where we diverted 20 percent of all of our traffic to keep it alive. And we actually, we actually liked our experience there because they are, we are not bound by any kind of uh, hardware restrictions. Um, then yes. we can move on, I guess, okay. to the next slide. Yes. So, so like you mentioned, so for the second phase of the project, you launched a request for proposal what were your requirements and your selection criteria for that? Uh, in the second uh, phase of the project, uh, we tried to extend the benefits of cloudification of our application services to on-premise data centers by employing a private cloud solution that mimics a public cloud experience as much as possible. I mean, within the limits of technological and financial feasibility. And uh, we therefore released an RFP to private cloud vendors. Many private cloud uh, providers, including, of course, Red Hat, responded to the RFP. Uh, putting cyber specific uh, details aside, uh, I think the RFP, can, the ideas in the RFP can be sum summarized as follows. Firstly, we, we needed a major platform which regard both uh, virtualization and containerization as first, first class citizens. Um, by that I mean, uh, we should be able to work our workloads flawlessly on uh, on both virtualization uh, part and containerization part, and their connectivity should be also seamless. Uh, th this kind of technology will will allow us uh, allow us to shift our applications from traditional VMs to uh, containers in our own pace because they, that's a big transformation project and we can't you know close the uh, shop and uh, we are doing this but we can't do that so we need time for that and uh, uh, without a big bank such a uh, platform will, will enable us this uh, transformation be as flow as graceful as possible uh, we also are looking for a platform where we can apply their SecOps principles, strengthen our security, governance, as well as improve our operational efficiency. Uh, at the same time, we are trying to change the culture in the company where development teams has stronger auto autonomy. Uh, the teams are going to be not only responsible for development of their products, but also its architecture, scaling, monitoring, etc. They should be able to control uh, production concerns like uh, number and composition of pods, auto scaling policies, selection of databases and other subsystems, and test them with these uh, by selecting them from uh, application catalog and then push those uh, development and changes to production with minimal infrastructure team involvement. Um, okay. We are also trying to Avoid vendor locking, where we can keep the symmetry between our on-prem uh, data centers and cloud data centers. Uh, this, is, this is also very important for us. Uh, also, uh, lastly, uh, to our experience, uh, operation of large open source Kubernetes installations are not really trivial work, especially the upgrade. Yeah, you can get it work, but the upgrade it really upgrade part is really painful. Uh, by upgrading different parts, you can easily end up with a configuration that has never been tested anywhere else before you. So you may be you may be in dark. So we need a vendor which we can trust for support, and also uh, we we are sure that they have released a, a very well tested bundle to us. This, this is the essence of the RFP. Okay. So I think now we have 
quite an in-depth understanding of the challenges and what you were looking for. So can we get a little bit technical and see what the proposed solution architecture was and how it essentially mapped to what Sahi Bindan was looking for? Yeah, uh, actually, when we got uh, uh, RFP and analyzed the requirements, uh, we thought uh, OpenShift on OpenStack-based solution supported with a self-storage can be a good fit because uh, most of their workloads were running on VMs. And so uh, we built a solution based on that. But uh, after we presented this to the Sahibin then, uh, Saibindan CTO stated that they were looking actually more um, hyper-converged and a unified solution to run containers and uh, virtual machines together seamlessly. So they don't want to invest on two separate stacks for integration, migration, and maintenance. So this became an additional effort for them. So uh, that's why we changed our solution to OpenShift virtualization based. So uh, we offered them a bare metal OpenShift uh, supported with OpenShift Data Foundation uh, to run both virtual machines and containers together with the support of OpenShift uh, virtualization. So uh, when we proposed that, uh, they actually the Cybernet team liked this one. Even uh, OpenShift virtualization was a fairly new technology at that time. Uh, they we decided to go on this solution. Okay, and so why did Sahibinin choose OpenShift and OpenShift virtualization uh, to get this massive goal over the finish line? Um, uh, as Jim mentioned, actually they were looking for a stable and a security focused uh, uh, comprehensive platform uh, to run containers and virtualized applications together. So I think OpenShift was a very good fit for that. And so we were a leader in this enterprise Kubernetes. And so it was very popular in also in Turkey as well. And uh, Jem also mentioned, as you remember, they were uh, trying to improve their uh, developer productivity, change the culture in so they can able to try and test new applications very uh, easily, like uh, in a cloud environment. So. I believe these were the, uh, you know, uh, pillars that, uh, you know, Sai Windan chose us. Okay, that's very interesting. And so what's the, what's the current architecture? Can you talk us through that? How is the traffic being distributed? Um, how are you delivering this project? Because it's so massive. Yeah. Okay, let me start with how we delivered this project very quickly. So we started the project uh, on February 2021. Uh, we made the bare metal OpenShift deployment in uh, Saibin then Ankara data center. Uh, so uh, Saibin then's cloud system, you know, they were uh, using the provision, the virtual machines and the configure their other infrastructure components. So they integrated uh, their Saibin then cloud system with, with using OpenShift uh, virtualization APIs. Uh, they did it very quickly, actually. After that, uh, they migrated more than 1,500 virtual machines. So these workloads include uh, the, some Java applications, Sybin Dance, API gateways, uh, even Active Directory, and many stateful applications. I think that was the topic of our today's session. So um, I think Jen will mention much more, but uh, we uh, onboarded MySQL servers, MongoDB servers, Cassandra, and Kafka clusters. So um, as uh, so on April, this went live, and uh, after that, uh, these clusters uh, started to get uh, data synchronization traffic from the other data centers. Uh, after getting that, uh, Saibindan team uh, actually routed, uh, started to route some image and content traffic, which is the majority of the traffic happening in Saibindan. You know, uh, when the people upload their uh, pic uh, photos of their houses, cars, so these are kept in a kind of a TDN, in private TDN network. So uh, these these kind of things were started to serve on OpenShift, but and on July 2021, uh, Saibin then routed 80% of uh, their whole site traffic to uh, OpenShift now. So 
Uh, now we are working on uh, the new other data center in Istanbul. So OpenShift is set up uh, there and uh, Cyberdyne team is migrating that one as well. Uh, as uh, currently, uh, we, we, as you can see, 80% uh, 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 of Cyberdyne traffic is uh, uh, routed to uh, OpenShift the clusters in Ankara and 20% is uh, going to the um, Google Cloud. Uh, they are currently Istanbul data center, uh, legacy Istanbul data center is decommissioned. And so we are now modernizing the, the other uh, data center now. Okay. And so where do we see this going in the near future? Yeah, I think in, in a short time, uh, this, uh, the Cybindan team will complete the migration of other applications in VMs uh, to to the Istanbul data center as well. And after that, each OpenShift um, cluster will be handling around 40% of the whole site traffic. So in the case of an emergency, they can able to switch traffic very easily between uh, sites. And uh, after that, uh, we will be starting on actually modernizing the applications and onboarding uh, containerized applications on OpenShift. Okay. So now can we talk a bit about the workloads as well that are being deployed on OpenShift? What are each of the components being used for and what applications are being supported? Uh, Sahibinden has uh, a monolith, a, a very large one, like millions of code, uh, which is that backend business services uh, and two, two more applications. and. Uh, they are a bit more lightweight. Uh, RAL is uh, resource access to our API gateway, and BitLane is our web application. These applications uh, by themselves sp span like uh, close to 600 machines on each da data center, and majority of the application uh, lies there. There are uh, many small microservices all orbiting the, this, this environment. Uh, but majority of the work is there, and uh, what we did was, as I said, uh, we we don't want to tackle two pro problems at the si same time, uh, and uh, we just did a lift and shift operation where we moved. They were already running on uh, VMs. We moved to OpenShift uh, contain OpenShift virtualization uh, for middleware. We use mainly memcache memcache we have used memcache because we have used cache uh, it's our application cache and uh, as our uh, mentions mentioned we have an internal cdn which mainly runs varnish uh, and uh, it serves at, uh, it contains in sketch like close to one petabyte uh, image. We also have to use Elasticsearch because we have to search stuff uh, in, in the classified in our classified site. So uh, at least a hundred VMs are different Elasticsearch clusters. We have to, we again have to use Kafka for event streaming and uh, inter-process messaging. Uh, as far as databases, we 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 use MySQL. Of, uh, it's the the one with absolute so we we treat as absolute source of truth because uh, we also have because it's transactional. We all, also have Mongo. Uh, by the, by the time this decision was made, Mongo doesn't have any transaction support. So uh, more like. Uh, ephemeral data like uh, login information or the, the kind of data if we lose we don't cry that kind of data uh, lives in mongo but it's reliable actually uh, in clickhouse we contain user activity it's it's kind of an analytical uh, database uh, but it can handle very big queries on big data really fast and you can actually connect your front-end application to, uh, to click us 
Uh, and it's much faster uh, in that regard, much faster than MySQL in those type of situations. And uh, we also have to use Cassandra. It's the impression count when uh, somebody clicks on a, on a classified, uh, pe- people can track how many clicks made on them, etc. cetera. Uh, all of these uh, uh, applications run on their own v- VMs on uh, rated OpenShift virtualization at the moment. And we are in the process of uh, modernizing the, now it's it's time to modernize the applications of uh, application themselves. Uh, we started um, recently microservices project where we uh, attack those monoliths to uh, monoliths and you know separate to the smaller parts so the, so we can run them on uh, virtualization on uh, contain containers instead of virtualization. That's very interesting. And so, uh, what what was your experience like of deploying these workloads on OpenShift using OpenShift virtualization? How did you migrate them on? Um, how how was it like? Uh, our infrastructure as code tooling actually allowed us easily to allowed us easily to add. Uh, Rated OpenShift virtualization as a virtualization provider, and uh, uh, we made this change. I mean, we already were able to uh, set up a data data center really fast. I mean, the migration of data, etc. Those are diff- different stuff, but I mean, the actual provisioning of the data center uh, was really autom- 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 and fast on. Um, Zen, but we added um, rated OpenShift virtualization at another provider, and uh, it was as easy at the, as our old way. So um, this is this this was our approach. Uh, as far as uh, running databases on OpenShift virtualization is concerned, um, we didn't feel any difference. I mean, it's not getting uh, any worse. <laughs> It's better actually. It's very, they, they, it's more, more performant compared to Zen. Uh, other than that, we haven't used uh, the database, the existing databases from the application catalog where we don't have to, the, which uh, we don't have to operate our, ourselves. Uh, but with microservices transformation, we expect to. Uh, the developers and pull their data, their own databases from the application catalog, and uh, then they can develop what, whatever they want and uh, push them to the uh, to the production where they themselves uh, decide on the size size of the database, how many CPUs, how many replicas, they, its uh, topology. So uh, we are we are hopeful about the future. Okay. Okay, I think those were most of my questions. Uh, thank you so much, Jem and Arkin. This has been really excellent. Thank you for going thank over you. things in such great detail. Sorry. Thank you very much, Jem. Nice thank, thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you.